Hi and welcome to Chandu.org. In this video, we're going to talk about how to use shapes, shapes as in drawing shapes or logos or images or pictures to enhance your Excel charts. Okay, so this is part of our awesome August series where for each and every day of August, I'm going to publish a new piece of content. You can participate in the awesome August Excel Festival too. All you have to do is simply visit chendu.org and uh, sign up for our newsletter and you will get a weekly email with a digest of all the awesome August content. Apart from awesome August, there are more than 500 Excel articles, tips, tutorials, videos, templates and all sorts of stuff when it comes to any aspect of Excel, be it dashboards, advanced charts, VBA, Power Pivot, Power Query formulas, array formulas, you name it, we got you covered. So let's go to the topic of the day, which is how to use shapes to enhance your Excel charts. I'm going to start with a very, very simple example, and then I'm going to show you something that could be highly relevant when it comes to business reporting and uh, dashboard reporting. So let's say you're looking at some sort of a fictional data uh, for a company where we have monthly sales data for one final one financial year so you have data from january 2014 all the way through december 2014 and we know the sales uh, for the time being assume this is a very very small company so the sales are in 500 480 like that if you would like to imagine big you could think of these as millions of dollars okay so whenever we have a data set like this we usually go with either a column chart or a line chart Let's start with a column chart and uh, insert a column chart for that data. And uh, it's it's a very, very simple step. You select this data set and then you insert a column chart. This is what we end up with. Now, while this column chart is pretty much relevant and it, it kind of tells the story, if you want to add a little bit of wow factor or uh, some sort of an effect to it, you could enhance it. Now keep in mind any kind of enhancements to the chart can result in uh, reduced data to ink ratio. That means the chart would take more time to read and it will have a little more clutter. So you need to do a little bit of balancing act. Okay, Don't go overboard when it comes to using any kind of shapes or pictures on the chart. Uh, but that said, uh, you know, it's a fun technique and there is always some use case for it when, when you have a lot going on. So I'm going to show you a very, very simple example first. This may not be very relevant for business reporting, but the next example that you see would be relevant. Uh, so let's say we select this and uh, if you think the bars are too, the columns are too plain vanilla and they're not exciting, what you could do is you could put some shapes there. For example, uh, you could go to your insert ribbon and select the drawing shapes and draw a shape that, that would be uh, perfect for this. Let's let's pick a circle and I'm going to draw a small circle here. Um, when, you, when you're drawing a circle, if you hold down the shift key, uh, you'll get a perfect circle. Otherwise, you'll end up with an oval. Okay, so we select, we draw a circle. I'm going to, you know, fill it up with some sort of a color like that. Something nice and good. Okay, once the circle is there, just select it and press control C to copy it. Okay, so copy the circle picture into your clipboard then select the columns in the chart and press ctrl V as if you want to paste the circle in the chart so select the chart columns and paste press ctrl V we would get the circles there obviously what happened is those circles got stretched okay so you can tell Excel how you want this pasting to happen if you would like to customize this you can select the select the columns and then press control one to format them alternatively you can right click and then say format data series uh, both of them will do the same thing this will open your format data series box here uh, where we are going to go to that fill option and we filled with a picture or texture basically we filled with a picture of circle so that's what excel selected and you can tell excel how you want this picturing to happen uh, by default it got stretched but you can stack it so you, you will get a stack of circles something like that okay so when you when you are stacking you can stack and scale with and uh, do some additional stuff but uh, essentially uh, we're going to go with stack 
so that uh, we get something like that. Just close that. So here is your column chart, but instead of showing regular columns, we added a little bit of interest or wow factor by showing circles. Okay. This will also allow you to probably get rid of grid lines and uh, and maybe even access labels if you know how high each circle is going to be. For example, this is 500, and if you if you could count, there are probably about 12 or 15 circles printed to go up to 500. So that could mean uh, if the first column is 500, the next one can be deduced because each one each circle is equal to equal width. Okay. That might require a lot of mental math for you or your audience, but uh, this is how you get started with that. Now, what if you don't want to fill circles or rectangles or hexagons? You wanted to fill something exotic. Well, you can do that as well. Let's say you're selling cars, especially sports cars. Why sports cars? Well, we all love them, so let's go with that. So you could get a sport car picture into your Excel workbook. I already have something here. Let's say it's a red color sport car and uh, you can you can copy the sport car you can select the bars and then you can paste them there so you now get sport cars there obviously the sport cars are not very clearly visible because of the way uh, we, we have arranged that but uh, once you once you play with the options and uh, uh, adjust the stacking preferences for example uh, I don't know what this is going to do. Let me try that. Well, that's not that's clearly not correct. So I'm going to go with five and see what happens. Oops. Apparently, that's the that's the best Excel can do, and uh, that's not really what we we would find enjoyable. You could go and maybe adjust the gap width, and uh, you know that might set some of the yeah. So we we make the bars columns uh, wider, and then that's how you can maybe see the sport cars a bit more clearly. Another thing that you could do is if you look at the sport car image, it's essentially a rectangle uh, which is wider than it is taller. So if you if you could come up with a shape that is more even, that is more like a square rather than a rectangle, uh, that will adjust the aspect ratio here, and you would end up seeing the images clearly. But essentially, you know, no matter who you want to fill up sport cars or circles or hexagons or arrows or whatever, uh, the the easiest thing that you have to do is put that image on the workbook, copy it, and paste it into the chart. That's all that's all it takes okay alternatively you can go through the chart options and then load a picture from there but I find the option of copy pasting to be really fun and very simple and there is really nothing to memorize it's just paste the picture of car into the columns that metaphor works beautifully you can use this technique not just for column charts and bar charts you can apply them for most of the other charts this particular technique may not work very well with a line chart because the line has nothing to fill except the line which is very very tiny and narrow. Uh, but if you are working with uh, an area chart or, uh, or or a scatter plot, this is something that works beautifully. Especially in in a in, in a scatter plot or an area chart, uh, what happens is the car or circle or uh, or hexagon or square whatever you are pasting. The size of it will grow and shrink according to the uh, according to the value of that bubble, and uh, that that can work quite intelligently and quite quite perfectly with that bubble metaphor. Again, keep in mind that you don't want to overdo this kind of a chart. This is something that you can use as a, a spare technique, and if needed, okay, maybe five percent of the time you can use it. But don't don't overdo this because these kind of charts reduce the readability and they they can be very clumsy to uh, explain to audience who are not familiar with, uh, with this metaphor. Okay, they work very well in in certain non-business situations like you're running a non-profit or you're running a school or uh, or you're doing a fundraiser and you just want to show how much is collected against the targets and things like that. You know these work well and they add a lot of fun and wow factor to the uh, newsletter or presentation or, or 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 brochure that you are putting together. 
So that's how you can use shapes and pictures in your charts to enhance the uh, enhance them. Now I'm going to show you something that can work even in a very serious business situation. I've been using this technique for a while and uh, today I'm really glad to share this fairly advanced and very very interesting technique with you. I'm going to move away this chart so that we can use the same screen space here to, to show that. I have already built that chart and uh, I just need to unhide some stuff and um, Imagine you you're reporting sales for your company at my incorporation in the 2014 same data set as before But this time you also have a, a target Okay, right now I entered 9,000, but let's say the target is 3,600 for that year Okay, so you wanted to show at what point of the year we reached the target. Okay as a milestone so in order to add a small milestone or arrow marker on the chart time frame, we could use the shape technique. Now you might be thinking, oh, how did that happen? How did we get a single arrow right above August where we breached the target of 3600? Uh, that's what I'm going to explain next. So what we have is the same data set here. And in an adjacent column, I calculated YTD total, which is nothing but the total running total of the sales so far. And we have target here which is named as target and in the adjacent column I wrote a formula to check at what point we met the target wherever we met the target I printed the number hundred and for all other cells that is zero okay so once we create such a thing what I did is I'm just going to undo the steps so that you can see this so we, we I created a simple column chart with the raw data and then I took the YTD data and I added it to the chart so you can add the data by go to select data uh, and add a new series. This one is YTD met which will be zero for all the months except the month in which we met YTD. Okay. And uh, so we, we would get that, that extra column stacked on top of the original columns only for August. The, the orange color column is always there for all other months, but it is zero height, so you don't even see it. But for August, it is 100, so it, you you see you see that. Why 100? Because every other value in our sales data is 300 or 400, so I thought 100 is a reasonable number. If you are talking about millions, probably you may want this to be you know 100,000 or 50,000 or something like that. Okay, so this number, the height of this should be in relation to rest of the columns in your data. So once we have that, what I did is I draw an, an arrow symbol. I copied that arrow symbol. I selected the orange series and pasted it. So there are these tiny arrows everywhere because the height is zero. We don't see them, but we see that only for August. Now, because all of this is linked to formulas, should the chart target change at any point of time, if you change the number, if this has to become 5000, what happens is the arrow will look like it is moving, right? The, it, it went from here to there. What happens if this is 2000? It will go here. So that's how we, we are able to use the arrow symbol inside the chart and change its position by creating a dummy series on top of original columns and filling it with an arrow symbol. If you look at the title, the title itself is interesting. It says Acme Incorporation Sales in 2014, target reached in May 2014. So it will tell you not only the, the, the title, but it also tells you clearly at which point of time we reached the target. Okay, so if what happens if you have a target which is more than our YTD total as of December? For example, my target is 7,000. Uh, in which case you don't see any arrows and the title says target never reached. So it, it is a very relevant technique and I find this kind of a technique very lightweight and very subtle and at the same time it can be very powerful and, and it can add that kind of wow. This chart is something that tells me where we are and it kind of allows a little bit of playfulness into your charts. So you can use shapes and pictures especially in scenarios like this. Uh, to add a bit of wall factor, playfulness and fun factor to your dashboards and reports and make them more interesting. I hope you find this particular video uh, useful. 
if you like this video please uh, please give it a thumbs up on youtube wherever you are watching this or if you are watching this on chendu.org please post your comments and suggestions if you do use shapes and pictures in charts again tell me how you are using it what kind of awesome things you are doing with it if you would like to download a copy of this workbook shapes in charts workbook uh, please head over to chendu.org if you are watching this video on youtube just uh, scroll down and watch the description uh, there will be a link that will take you to chendu.org where you can uh, find the workbook if you are already on chendu.org and watching this video you know where to find the download workbook thank you so much for uh, spending time with me today i'll talk to you again soon bye bye